Thanks for joining us. This is Amhara Media Corporation and you're watching our daily updates live from the studio. I'm Gaila Damu. Stay tuned. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed held a discussion with IMF Director Kristalina Georgieva in Rome, Italy. Office of the Prime Minister stated that the Premier held a discussion with the Director on the sidelines of the Italy-Africa Summit. Georgieva said that she had good discussion with the Prime Minister on how the IMF could support Ethiopia's economy in the homegrown reform agenda. The Italy-Africa summit is being held under the theme A Bridge for a Common Growth. During the two-day summit, Italy's proposed MATI plan for Africa will be discussed. The agenda of the summit covers diverse areas of cooperation, including food security, culture, education, vocational training, energy security, economic and infrastructure development, as well as joint efforts against human trafficking and terrorism. UNESCO Chair on International Water Cooperation, Ashok Swain, said that the current memorandum of understanding that Ethiopia has signed with Somaliland is a critical move that would expedite trade and commerce in the East African region. Ran Warkana has the details. The memorandum of understanding for partnership and cooperation inked by Ethiopia and Somaliland includes wide scopes of cooperation in social, economic, political and military fields. The memorandum is also intended to serve as a framework for the multi-sectoral partnership between the two sides and shall pave the way for realizing the aspiration of ETP to secure access to the sea and diversify its access to sea porters. Speaking to Ina, Swain stated that access to sea is imperative particularly for Ethiopia, which has been striving to become a regional economy powerhouse in recent years. According to Swain, ETP is one of the seizable economies in sub-Saharan African region and also has growing population. Ethiopia is a much larger country. Ethiopia needs uh, access to the sea in, in uh, not only dependent on Djibouti port, but also the port is available in Somaliland. So in general, I do see that every country should have access to the sea uh, if they are landlocked. Second, I think Ethiopia, because of its uh, increasing number of population, because of its strategic importance, because of its economic uh, growth, it needs much more um, uh, uh, much more opening to the sea. And I think uh, Somaliland is, is a good um, uh, step in that direction. In particular, the UNESCO Water Cooperation Chair pointed out that the Memorandum of Understanding to get access to seas is extremely sensible as ETP has an increasing number of population, strategic importance and economic growth. Most importantly, Swain stated that the Memorandum of Understanding is important because it would open up the Red Sea for maximizing trade and commerce activities in this significant part of the global trade route. Swain elaborated the deal is also highly anticipated to accelerate regional integration and will enable countries in the region to develop together. Trade and the commerce. And the trade and commerce is very important thing, not only for the development of a particular country, but for the regional uh, integration, regional economic integration. And I think uh, as uh, any link, as I mentioned, with the uh, for any Ethiopian or any landlocked countries, opening to a, a, a regional countries or the sorry but neighboring countries uh, port is a very good uh, step in that direction and i think that keeps the countries together that keeps countries uh, undeveloped together however the unesco water cooperation chair believed that some regional political forces are trying to jeopardize Ethiopian endeavors to have access to seaport. particularly the chair mentioned egypt's antagonistic rhetoric since the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding, mentioning that Ethiopia once had a seaport to access the Red Sea until the early 1990s before Eritrea became an independent country, 
the chair said the East African nation should have greater access to the rest of the world. Landlocked country needs to have access to the sea, and that access to the sea by any country should not be stopped because that uh, because that is almost blackmailing a country which is. Uh, landlocked and you uh, you stop the access uh, so is for economic progress for internal uh, regional uh, development uh, the access to sea is very important and particularly a country like ethiopia which is uh, economic or has become for the recent years has been an economic powerhouse in that region the access to sea is already important to economic progress for internal and regional development particularly a country like ethiopia which has become an economic powerhouse in that region a discussion forum held in italy on the sidelines of italy africa summit to promote the existing investment opportunities of ethiopia New and prominent Italian companies that have great desire to invest in Ethiopia have participated at the discussion forum organized by Ethiopian Embassy in Italy. Ethiopian Ambassador to Italy, Demiti Habisa, said on the forum that the forum is vital to help the Italian companies to understand about investment opportunities in Ethiopia. She also expressed the commitment of the embassy to provide the necessary support to the investors. According to the ambassador, efforts are underway to further strengthen the investment, trade and tourism cooperation between Ethiopia and Italy. Health Minister Liat Adesa said that the Ethiopia Pandemic Multisectoral Prevention Preparedness and Response Project, which we have launched today, is a paradigm shift towards a holistic and multisectoral approach to address public health crisis. Work and has the details. In her remark during the launching ceremony, Health Minister Liat Hadassa said that the pandemic fund will cover 50 million US dollar, while development partners will cover 63 million US dollar. Liat added, by intertwining health and agriculture, Ethiopia aspires to bolster food security, fortify surveillance for zoonotic disease, and foster sustainable livelihoods among vulnerable communities. The minister noted that strategic emphasis is placed on enhancing laboratory functions, surveillance capabilities, and workforce development development, underscoring the imperative to strengthen our capacity in preventing, detecting and responding to health emergencies. By spawning the laboratory, workforce and surveillance, the ministry will give special emphasis to the One Health approach to bolster Ethiopia's preparedness and response capabilities over the next three years. Leah stressed. With a total project budget of about 130 million USD, we start confident to implement targeted interventions at the federal regional and community level, as well as at points of entry. This inclusive approach that, endeavor, uh, that our endeavors resonate across all platforms of society is leaving no one behind. Agriculture Minister Germa Amante said that the One Health initiative will greatly enhance the national capacity for detection, reporting, community engagement, awareness raising campaigns, policy alignment and resource allocation of animal disease. It will reinforce Ethiopia's capacity to prevent, detect, and respond to the public health emergencies and pandemic preparedness and response capabilities. Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Africa CDC, Director General Jean Cassia recalled on his part that Africa was the only continent without regional and multi-country proposal in the first round. He stressed that that will not be the case in the second round. Today, we have to start to talk about one health approach. Without one health approach, we will not succeed. We need to bring together all of our components, our entities to work together. That was reported by Brahan Wismau and we apologize for not mentioning the right reporter. The Aga Horse Culture Festival is celebrated on 23rd January Ethiopian calendar every year. Operation is already completed. Brahan Workana has more on it. Awi Nationality, Administration, Culture and Tourism Department stated that the zone has completed its preparation to celebrate the 84th anniversary of Aga Horse Culture Festival colorfully keeping its social values as it is. According to the Head of Culture and Tourism Department of the Zone, 
Mr. Laken Sisai, the festival is being celebrated with different events every year on January 23 Ethiopian calendar. The committees have completed their preparation to celebrate the festival colorfully. As two committees, the prime responsibility is keeping the social values to sustain and make the event one of a remarkable tourist destination in the region. Chairman of Diago Horse Culture Association, Tlaye Ayeno, on his past said, Members of Ago Horse Culture have completed their preparation to celebrate the festival colorfully and properly. Tlaye also stated that Diago Horse Culture has strong organizations from Kabale to Warada level. According to the chairman, different kinds of horse riding scenes are going to be performed for the participants of the event. The 84 years old association is registered at National Heritage as Ago Horse Culture in 2014 Ethiopian calendar and has over 62,000 members by now. The Ethiopian Intellectual Property Authority said that Ethiopia is revamping the patent system aiming to encourage globally competitive inventions and foster development and prosperity. Modom Luye has more. The European Patent Office and the Authority organized a symposium on Ethiopia's patent reforms, meeting with government, industry and academic institutions. Ethiopian Intellectual Property Authority Director General Waldu Imasil on the occasion said his authority is revamping the nation's patent system aiming to encourage globally competitive inventions and facilitate development and prosperity. Recognizing the crucial role of intellectual property in fostering innovation, the authority is actively collaborating with the European Patent Office to modernize Ethiopia's patent landscape. The authority's multifaceted reforms encompass revising the patent proclamation, establishing a framework for protecting traditional knowledge, developing a geospatial information proclamation, and crafting a national intellectual property policy strategy. These initiatives aim to create a robust and comprehensive intellectual property ecosystem that fosters creativity, protects investors' rights, and attracts foreign investment, it's learned. European Patent Office has been supporting the authority to revise the patent proclamation and connecting Ethiopian universities with European patent system resources, he pointed out. So far, two Ethiopian universities are connected to these resources and eight more will be added to the list, he stated. To improve the patent system, the authority has embarked on a revision of the patent proclamation, a draft of traditional knowledge in a geospatial proclamation, it is learned. European Patent Office Regional Disc Coordinator Nicolas Kornig said his office will continue to strengthen support to the authority to improve the patent system. The office is successful in the patent issues registration and will share that experience with Ethiopia, he added. Since its inception, the Ethiopian Intellectual Property Authority has registered 658 patents. Justice State Minister Ermias Iman Ibrahim said revising the patent law, which has been in effect for decades, is crucial to encourage competitive innovations that drive the country's development plans. The reforms the authority has been undertaking are key instruments to improve the patent system in the country, he added. Innovation and Technology State Minister Fudia Ali said innovation plays an replaceable role in making digital Ethiopia a reality. The patent law that is being revised will bring the government's efforts in the sector to a higher level and will allow the creation of internationally accepted inventions, she noted. Creative owners in the country should also get the benefits they deserve from the sector in a proper way, Fudia added. The ongoing patent reforms and collaborative efforts with the European Patent Office hold immense potential to propel Ethiopia up the rankings and unlock its true innovation potential. As we proceed to news beyond borders, 
Italian Premier Giorgia Meloni opened the Italy-Africa Summit on Monday aimed at unveiling Italy's development plan for the continent, which the government hopes will stem migration flows. Overall, 155,754 people arrived on Italian shores last year, more than half of them Africans. In attendance at the Rome summit were over 20 African leaders, including William Ruto of Kenya, top European Union lending institutions. The Italian plan is named after Enrico Metti, founder of state-controlled oil and gas giant Eni. Italy seeks to become the natural energy supply hub for the whole of Europe. The European Union banned Russian energy supplies following the war in Ukraine. The Mati plan also seeks cooperation with Africa beyond energy. It involves pilot projects in areas such as education, healthcare, and agriculture. Meloni said Italy would set aside an initial 5.5 billion euros for the plan, including public guarantees for investment projects and 3 billion euros for a climate fund set up in 2021. She added that our future inevitably depends on the future of African continent, as African News reported it. That's all the news we have for today. I'm Gaila Damu. Thanks for watching and stay tuned with the rest of Amico programs.